Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and this is the Vessel 72 Tooth Ratcheting Screwdriver. It's got two pawls inside the, the ratcheting mechanism, uh, and it has one of the best lockups I've ever seen or ever felt in a ratcheting screwdriver. This is the model uh, 6800, TD6800, and it comes with two bit carousels, at least the version I got. Uh, you can order it with one bit carousel for a whole lot less than the $27 or $26 and change I paid for this one. I think it's 19 and change or something if you only want one, one carousel, but I got two, uh, basically with uh, Phillips, which we'll have that talk in just a second, hex bits, um, and then Torx bits with one slotted there. Now the, the discussion is, is this uh, a Phillips bit or a Japanese uh, industry standard or JIS bit? It is marked PH2. Everything says PH2. It looks like a PH2, uh, but I don't know where we're at in that discussion, so jump in if you know more. But anyway, the bit carousels um, are in look very similar to uh, what I've encountered with the PB Swiss, which I thought this was an ideal one. Um, very easy to work with, easy to find the bits you want, strong enough. This one's a little persnickety in a couple ways. One is when you pop the bit out, trying to get the bit back in sometimes can be um, a bit of work to get it lined up or if you slide it down or you know how it goes in. The other thing is this slides in and you can see there are two little kind of clamps right there that grab the sides of the screwdriver. When I first got it, I could not get these in. And the packaging actually said to basically bang it onto something like that. Once you do it a couple times, they go in and in and out pretty easily. But it seems like something they could have taken care of at the factory. But anyway, the 62 or 72 tooth ratcheting mechanism is just silky smooth. Very little back drag. But the big thing um, is the lockup. I mean, it is really solid. In fact, it's kind of like the PB Swiss that you can probably find a particular setting. Like right there, I found one. This is, as you would think, it was a solid screwdriver. I mean, the only play is probably wiggling this direction back and forth. There is essentially none when I do this. Other screwdrivers, well like here's a snap-on. Uh, if I center that, there's a lot of rattle there. Uh, partially because it's a removable bit, you know, but also the mechanism. PB Swiss, like I said, is probably one of the best. If I center that, I mean that is, it's a dead lockup, but I'm sure I can find a place. Now nah, that's even better. <laughs> zero to less than zero, huh? Um, Sometimes you find just a hint, but this one's locking up nice and solid. Um, here's a gear wrench. This is the one with that um, bit carousel and a rotating um, handle and a work light. But on this guy, if I center that, that's a lot of wiggle. Um, here's a Stahl Vila version, very similar. In fact, the bit carousels are interchangeable. Click that to the center. There's That's how much wiggle that has. It's quite a bit. Gear wrench. Quite a bit, but also that's got a removable um, bit. Here's a Craftsman. Still a bunch. Milwaukee. If I grab it by the nozzle here, that's still plenty. Going back, nothing, nothing. Um, that's one thing I look for um, in, a, in a really high quality um, ratcheting screwdriver. You have to have that lock up. And one thing, that Vera's got a new, uh, a, a new driver, I guess. It's kind of a combination 3 8 and uh, quarter hex. But the problem is it's much like a ratchet. You can go one way, or you can go the other way, but you can't go, there's no stop. There's no frozen spot in the middle that allows you 
um, you know, to get the feel for the fastener without having to ratchet. I noticed that with this one too when I was using it, that you have to flip it back and forth if you want to, you know, make that adjustment, you know, to that perfect spot, which is really what you want to be able to do with a lot of fasteners. You can feel like, whoops, that might be a little over tight. You'll back it off, but you have to feel that when it occurs. Um, and that if you have to keep switching back and forth between a ratcheting mechanism, it, it's not good. So usually crank it in and then do the last little bit of turn with kind of that human hand torque. The other thing that's kind of interesting that I, I noticed as I was playing with these, I can put all of the, uh, all these over here, including that. Snap-on's on its own. This mechanism here, it's kind of interesting. If I have it centered, it's, um, it's stopped there. If I push it to the right, that direction, it now tightens in that direction. Twist it to the left, tightens to the left. All of these others, if I push this to the right, it tightens to the left, to the left, tightens to the right. See that? Same there, same there, same there, same there, and there, and finally, and with Milwaukee. So what's happened is, um, Snap-on's gone out on its own, which is why I'm always flipping this, uh, this is the one I use the most, uh, flipping this in the direction, you know, is I'm, I'm so used to it, but when I go to something else, I'm always turning it the wrong way, and it's like, well, that's wrong. Hmm. And I, I guess I was thinking I just wasn't memorizing it, but because I use the snap-on the most, I end up um, thinking that I can, when I want to tighten something that way, turn it that way and tighten that way, turn it that way, tighten the other way. Um, it's the opposite. Uh, this also has a very easy um, lever. This has probably one of the finest, like smallest lever or uh, switches on it. Um, and it's pretty slippery. In fact, the whole handle's kind of slippery, but I don't really notice because there's some significant indentations in it. Um, so I can screw, whoops, I just did it backwards again, um, but I can screw that in and hang on. If you add a little bit of a, I don't know, oil or anything on your hand, it might be a little tough to hang on to. Um, but it is a small handle too. It's smaller than most. Um, here's compared to the snap-on. You can see it's pretty tiny. Um, but for uh, the price and for the performance, it's great. I did notice that way down in there, I can see some movement, which tells me Maybe if stuff gets in there, metal flakes, gar or dirt or whatever, if you're setting those down and then you drop it in and whack it and it knocks off the stuff and it falls down into that little hole, you might gum this up. And I don't see an easy way to open it up, but for you know, 26, 27 bucks um, for something like this, I think that's that's not not a big deal. Um, anyway, this is a uh, uh, a, a pretty solid design. I mean, it, it, it impressed me. There is also a stubby available that has a ratcheting mechanism, and I'm assuming it's the same ratcheting mechanism. I'll do a separate video on that um, and compare it to other, uh, other stubby, ratcheting stubbies. But overall, I think for the money, this is, this is a screaming deal. It's a great screwdriver. Yeah, it's a little hard. I like it. They call it crystal because it's see-through. A little harder to uh, hang on to than some of these rubberized ones. Um, and a little bit tougher to, swip, to uh, switch this back and forth. But the lockup, that is just incredible. Very nice. Um, if you find that one sweet spot, there it is. I mean, there is... A, you know, I can tell that there are two pieces here, but I don't know if it's that sideways wiggle that's giving it away. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It is there is zero, absolutely zero play back and forth. There is a little bit of wobble this way, though, if I tilt that back and forth. But otherwise, this way, nothing. Pretty impressive. Anyway, uh, I put links below to this one, um, and I will be uh, uh, working with the stubby here soon, too. But with that, 
Doc out.